All right, well, just to be respectful of everyone's time this morning, we can go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us for today's SBDC webinar, What's in a Brand with Scott Clannon of Clannon Marketing. And also thank you for joining us for SBDC Day. Um, we are very excited to share some announcements throughout the day on our social media, so please keep a lookout for those. Um, we also just scheduled our full series with Scott through the end of August. So if you're looking for that information, it is out there as well, both on our social media and Scott's website. You are welcome to ask questions throughout this session. You can just submit those via the chat box and we'll get them covered once Scott is done with his presentation. And then you will also receive a follow-up email um, that will probably go out later today. It will include a recording of the session and where you can download a copy of Scott's presentation to revisit any of that information. So at this time, I'll hand it off to Scott and you can get started. Excellent, thank you, Jordan, and welcome. Uh, welcome to our What's in a Brand webinar on this SBDC day. I'll be sharing my screen, so one moment while I pull up today's presentation. All right, Jordan, just confirm, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Excellent. Well, again, today's topic is what's in a brand. This is one of my favorite topics that we talk about uh, because it's it's something that is a little misunderstood in the world of marketing, in the world of creative, uh, but it's something that everybody needs. Um, so I'm excited to share some tips and tricks with you today. As Jordan um, just went through, I also have a couple of housekeeping items. If you'd like a copy of today's presentation, you can go to clanandmarketing.com forward slash workshops. Just scroll about midway through the page and you're going to see a for attendees section. Just fill out your name and email. And again, you'll get a PDF copy of today's presentation. Like Jordan mentioned, we just yesterday launched our <clears throat> new series of marketing webinars through, um, through August. And so there's a variety of really great topics in there. Again, all these are free thanks to our local SBDC office and our local community partners. Again, that full schedule can be found on this website as well, just right at the top. It will direct you either to the SBDC's website or their Zoom, excuse me, their Zoom um, registration page. But again, that full list is, is on this website. As Jordan mentioned, my name is Scott Clannon. I am the owner of Clannon Marketing. We're a full service marketing creative agency based in downtown Champaign. And we serve clients all across the Midwest from website design, digital marketing, video production, and more. Uh, but we also work in the world of brand design. Uh, this is really helpful for new businesses when they're just starting off, really wanting to establish their brand. Or maybe businesses that have been trucking along for a number of years, but you know what? We've never really strategized into ourselves. We, we, we really haven't talked about who we are as a brand. And, and what we want our customers perceive us at, perceive us as, what our brand identity looks like, right? We may just have a logo, but is that really all you have? And so we're gonna talk about all the things that goes into a good solid brand. Like with all of our uh, workshops and webinars, uh, there's so much that we can cover. So again, today's workshop or webinar is about 45 minutes. And as Jordan mentioned, we should have some time at the end for questions and answers. So if you do have a question at any point today, use that little Zoom toolbar, at the top or bottom of your screen, that little chat box, and, and uh, place your question there. And Jordan will read that to me at the end. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is the agenda for today. We're going to talk about branding itself. I think a lot of times when people think of branding, they think immediately of your logo design, a logo that you can put on a business card, on your envelope, letterhead, email signature. You're not wrong. That is certainly a key part of branding, but there's so much more that goes into branding than just a logo. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the structure of a good brand. And then, of course, it's really important to understand who you're communicating with, right? So your audience identification, and then how do you stand out in the marketplace, uh, understanding uh, your, your competitors. So making sure that you are doing competitor research. Branding is all about positioning, which we'll talk about. And you want to position yourself as a leader in your industry. Uh, you know, you want to lean into your differentiators, what sets you apart from the competition, what makes you better from some of your competitors. So we're going to talk about competitor research, being unique, and then we're going to segue over to brand identity. Even though, again, a lot of people just think of brand identity when it comes to branding, it still is a key piece 
in the brand puzzle. But there are a few things you need to uh, keep in mind before you get to the logo design. There's a few th uh, steps that you need to follow. So this is our agenda for today. We should have, again, plenty of time for questions and answers at the end, and we'll go from there. All right, so what is branding? There are so many different definitions of branding um, out there. This is one that I've been using over the past couple of years. Branding is a connection between customers and company, service or product, establishing a brand that customers trust, right? It's the perception. It's what people, I think it was the Amazon maybe CEO that said this, but it's what people say about you when you're not in the room. We're going to go through examples, but I'm assuming there's a variety of different brands that you follow, right? Why are you a loyal brand advocate for that company, right? Is it because they give back to the community? Is it because you like the way they interact with their fan base, the, like the way they make you feel, right? So a brand is all about a feeling. It's an experience, right? Any touch point that you have with the brand when someone else is talking about that brand, you know, in a casual setting, what are they saying about it? Um, branding is everything. It's not just that logo design. So hopefully today, by the end of today's um, presentation, you'll have a little better understanding of what really goes in to, uh, to a good brand. But at the end of the day, like I mentioned, branding is everything. Okay, branding is really built on three core components. And the first one I'm calling is, is brand heart. We're gonna go through each one of these um, together here, but brand heart, brand messaging, and brand identity. So what do, what do each of these components mean? So your brand heart, this is your vision. Why do you exist? Why are you in business? What drives you, right? Some of you on the call, you are entrepreneurs, you started the business. Some of you are marketing directors. You're overseeing all the marketing operations. Why are you in business? What? Why do you do what you do? This is your, if you have a vision statement, a purpose, your mission statement, your values, right? This is really the, the pillars that your brand stands on. This is the foundation of your brand. Your brand messaging is all about your brand voice and your personality. Uh, this could be your tagline, your messaging pillars, okay? So if you think of it, and again, I'm going to have some examples, but the one example I always give people um, is Jimmy John's. We've all been to Jimmy John's, right? You step into a Jimmy John's and what happens? You know, they, they greet you. Um, hey, welcome to Jimmy John's. They're very friendly. They're freaky fast, Right. And so you, you, you have an idea of what the experience is going to be before you even step in the door. At the end of the day, it's just a sandwich shop. That's it, right? But they've curated and developed this brand around a simple sandwich. Now, the sandwiches are good, right? They make their own bread and they have certain you know, high quality ingredients and whatnot. But at the end of the day, you are selling a sandwich and there's many other sandwich options, many other options, just probably a stone throw away from that Jimmy John's location, but why Jimmy John's? And so they're leaning into some of their differentiators, extremely friendly, approachable crew and good quality product and freaky fast. So that's why a lot of their messaging is related to kind of those three core elements. So brand, voice, and personality, tagline, messaging pillars. Now, if you think at the, at the same time, you have Jimmy John's over here, this casual, fun, approachable brand voice, brand personality, but then you think of a bank, a financial institution, right? This is a little more buttoned up. They're not going to be using the same phrasing, the same brand, voice, or personality as Jimmy John's. They're going to be a little more pinned up and formal. But maybe theirs is a little more about, um, you know, we're here to help you on your financial journey. So their brand voice is more confident, firm, helpful, approachable, but professional, right? Your guiding uh, advisor on your financial journey. And maybe that's the position that bank takes. So brand voice, personality, tagline, and messaging pillars. Then we go into brand identity. This is where a lot of people immediately want to start here on their branding journey. They want, they're like, I'm going to start this business. I have this idea in mind. I need a logo. You're not wrong. You do need a logo, but you do need to establish your brand heart and brand messaging first before you get to brand identity. 
what you develop in brand heart and brand messaging guides creative direction for your brand identity process. So when we're working with clients on a brand identity project, the questions that we're asking, a lot of the questions are related to the brand heart and brand messaging. Who, who are you? What's your mission? Um, what's your, if your brand was a person, tell me more about the person. Tell me about their personality. Tell me about their, their brand voice and their tone. What do they stand for, right? What, do, what would they wear? What would they look like? Those questions help guide them brand identity. What you design for a sandwich shop, creative wise, right? Logo, colors, fonts is going to be different than what you design for a bank. Same thing. What you design for a bank is going to look different than like a childcare facility. Bright, fun, vibrant colors, fun, bubbly type of fonts, playful fonts and typography. You know, it just has a different look and feel because you're establishing this personality, this appearance, right? That resonates with your customer and aligns well with your position in the marketplace. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, think of a brain structure in three components, brain heart, brain messaging, and brain identity. And at the end of the day, document it. One of the first things that we always ask a new client is if we're working with them on design elements, do you have a brand guide? And a lot of organizations, a lot of companies don't. You don't need a big budget. You don't need to be a big business or organization to have a brand guide, but a brand guide establishes consistency. And so when I, let's say if you're working with an intern over this coming summer, and this intern is helping you create social media graphics in Canva. Perfect. Well, if you just let the intern off and running, they're probably going to pick a template, maybe make some design adjustments, some color adjustments. Maybe they try to get the blue pretty close to your blue. They're just kind of adding in some text. Maybe they put their logo on there and they, they put it out on social media. You may start having inconsistencies with your creative content if you don't have a brand guide. If Again, if you have other people working with you on your social media strategies, on your advertising strategies for the year, this brand guide establishes rules, um, establishes guidelines for utilizing your brand. And so this is where you start documenting these are the fonts that we use all the time. This is the same font and color and your color codes that we use on our business cards, on our stationery, on our website. Maybe you have printed signage around the office. Same thing. So anytime you're designing things in the future, you want to make sure you're using your consistent color palette. You're using your consistent fonts. Maybe you have certain imagery that you use. Um, and then does the copy that you put on there, is it in the tone uh, that you want to set for your second component, that brand messaging? So this brand guide, again, it documents everything. We'll talk about this in a bit too, but this brand guide could also be a good onboarding tool, right? So almost a good training tool. We call this living the brand. So if you have a new employee join your team, you as the marketing director, as the owner, as the executive director, you're probably one of the best sales people, right? You understand it, you get it. You can talk to any customer and you know, explain who you are, why you're in business and the story of your business. But if you bring in this new employee, you kind of give them the basic training, they may not have that same passion or that know-how of, of how do I explain who we are or what are certain words or phrases that we use when we give our little elevator pitch. This brand guide could still document not only just your brand identity, uh, but you can document your, um, your mission statement, your values, uh, your core attributes, all those things, your, your, how you got started. This is, again, a good use of not only for future design work, but for onboarding new employees to make sure that they live the brand on day one, they understand uh, the brand that they're, they're coming into. All right, it's really important um, anytime you're doing marketing work, creative work, to understand who you're talking to, because this is gonna help position the messaging, position the look, uh, and position where you want to deploy certain creative campaigns. So it's important to understand who you want to talk to, where are they on the internet, 
and what's most important to them. Again, you can then break down certain demographic information, income, gender, age, tell me more about their hobbies, behaviors, lifestyle choices. If you've been on any of my webinars, I pretty much have this slide in every single one. Um, this is gonna help guide you uh, to, to really understand, well, what, you know, what should our brand tone be? Well, who are you talking to? What should the brand identity look like? Okay, we understand who you are, but let's understand who this brand identity, this brand messaging needs to speak to, right? You know, if you're more of a, um, let's say, just a quick example, more of a, like a bar and grill, right? Sports bar, burgers, drinks, appetizers, etc. It's casual. Um, but if you develop a look that's overly polished, that's very tight and buttoned up, that's very elevated, that may look expensive, there's a disconnect, right? Because that's not speaking to the audience that if you're wanting to start a sports bar, that's not the look, that's not the position to take um, for, for your bar. So a quick little example, you wanna make sure everything aligns with who you are and who you're looking to, to market to. Okay, your brand mission statement. So what value does your business provide? What is your company most passionate about? Your mission statement defines um, your purpose for existing. So mission statements, a lot of people get a little nervous of wanting to get wordy in their mission statement. They um, start developing almost like a paragraph mission statement and it needs to be simple. Um, what do you provide? What are you most passionate about? What do you stand for? There are certainly a lot of different mission statement exercises that you can go through. And today, of course, we're not going to go through all that. But I do want to know, you should really be thinking about what is your mission statement for your organization? Um, why do you exist? This is going to help guide your branding, um, all of the components that we, we just went through by simply just developing that, that mission statement. So a little exercise, again, if you're trying to think about, gosh, well, where do I get started? Really think about these questions. What do you do? Who do you do it for? Why do you do it better? And then why do you do it? This is going to have really, you know, these simple questions, there's a lot more. Again, if you do a little research online or if you're working with some sort of brand advisor, they're going to ask you a variety of questions. But these are just like some quick little simple thought starters uh, to get the mind rolling of where, where should I get started when it comes to developing my brand? Um, or I've never really thought about this before. So again, what do you do? Who do you do it for? Why do you do it better in that differentiator? And why do you do it? Going back to that question, why do you do it better? It's really important to then understand, well, who are my competitors? Who am I up against? If a potential customer or client is Googling us, who else are they Googling? Who else are they maybe reaching out to? And it's important if, if, if you're like a service-based business and someone comes to you and you're, you have a little discovery meeting with them, you know, just simply ask, are you, are you working? Are you talking with other companies for this project? Again, that could help aid in when do I need to get the proposal out to you, et cetera. But understanding who are maybe they also, are, are they also considering uh, to purchase your service, to purchase your product? So do a little research. And this is something that we did when we first got started. We really wanted to understand not only who our competitors were in the marketplace, but we knew that with our line of business, um, there's not a ton of competition. Of course, we have some local competition, there's some regional competition, but we knew that our potential customers weren't just looking for our services within this area. They were also looking for services, expanding their reach into the region. So we expanded our reach and, and really identified who are all of our competitors? What service and products do they offer? What are customers saying about them? Reading their reviews. Are they really known for good food? really known for good service, a little mix of both. Um, and then how do they market their business? <clears throat> Excuse me. So what marketing avenues are they taking uh, to market their business? Are they doing more traditional forms of marketing, the radio, billboard, bus ads? Um, are they doing more new age forms of marketing, the, the targeted social media ads, the search engine marketing, Google ads? So how are they marketing their business? So do a little research. This could be a fun little exercise where you could just come up with an Excel spreadsheet. We can all be little armchair detectives 
and, and spend some time on our competitors' website. Understand the work that they do, the products that they offer, some of the words and phrasing, the personality tone, the brand tone that they're using um, on their website, and how they're positioning themselves. Are they positioning themselves as the highest quality, the high-end, most expensive um, product service provider in the area? Are they more of a lower cost option? Um, do they offer product services that you offer? If so, how are they marketing those? Or do you offer something they don't offer? We really want to understand, again, putting ourselves in the shoes of the customer. What are my options out there? And why should I pick you? And that's the biggest question I always ask clients uh, in initial meetings is, this all sounds great, but... There's other companies down the road that offer the same thing you offer. Why should I come to you? And if you have a hard time answering that, take some time to think about it, right? Because you really want to make sure you're confident in how you answer that because all of your messaging and your language and your positioning uh, should really align with your differentiators and what really makes you stand out, what makes you the best choice um, among I guess, a variety of different competitors in the air. So again, going back to that, um, that thought, what makes you unique? So give, an, give your audience a reason to choose you over another. So what value do you provide and what experience do you deliver? So I'm going to give you a quick little example, a uh, little story. This is, I'm originally from the Peoria area, and there is, when I was in high school, um, I worked for a brand new uh, community center at the time. So we had a fitness center, we had a gym, a pool, forming arts center, really cool facility. And when I got the job, I thought I need to look the part. I need a really cool pair of athletic shoes. And so all my friends in, in high school, the ones that were like in, in cross country or were runners or, or those who worked out, a lot of them recommended a store called Running Central. And as just a note, I've never worked with Running Central before. I don't know them personally. Uh, this is just a, a personal example that I have that I love sharing. I thought they did well. But everyone at that time said, you, you've got to go to Running Central. So I remember I went to their store. This was not the store at the time, but I went to their store and it was just kind of an older corner building um, in an older part of town. It wasn't anything crazy on the outside. And I really remember thinking, walking up to it, I was like, oh, this is, is this it? This, I guess so. So I walk in and, and again, a smaller, older store. And I immediately start talking to a, um, an employee that came up to me and, and just genuinely was just asking me questions about, you know, my running style, uh, how I, I plan to use the shoes. He took all these really great measurements and then basically had me sit down and brought me some options, which was a little different. Um, I'm usually used to just kind of going up to the wall, picking a shoe that, that catches my eye and trying that on. But he said, you know, based off of what you told me, here are some recommendations that, that I have. And so I put them on and he said, okay, let's go outside. And so we go outside, I have these new pair of shoes on and I'm on the sidewalk and he kind of crouches down and he says, okay, now run down the block what are we doing here, right? Like I have these new pair of shoes on I have not purchased yet. Uh, and I'm now running away from the store with these new shoes on. But when I look back, I realized that he was watching me run. He was watching how my my feet interacted with the pavement, how my, my, my ankle and, and shoes interacted. I'm not entirely sure everything he was looking for, but I could tell he was evaluating how I was using the shoe and how my feet was interacting with the pavement. I ran back and he said, that looked great, how they feel. We came inside, we talked a little more. I ended up buying that pair of shoes. Now, they were on the more expensive side, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. I wasn't just buying a pair of shoes that day. I was part of the Running Central experience. I could have gone to a big box store. I could have gone at that time online and ordered a pair of shoes and just you know, cross my fingers and hope that they would work well. But here I had someone who, yes, down the road, there might be a big box store that you have to just go on and try shoes. How do they stand out? It's all about the experience and that position of we want to help you almost be your running advisor to find the perfect pair of shoe. And we'll do this by X, Y, and Z. Right there, there's a differentiator. 
I'm not going to find that in a big box store, let alone I may not find a customer service person within the shoe department. So it's really up to me to try to identify the best shoe for me. And I, that's simply just by, do my toes fit? Do they not slip? Perfect. But over here, you have someone who is a runner, who knows what to look for and is providing some expert opinions. In that case, I am willing to pay a little bit more because there's this added value. So hopefully that example makes sense. This is a photo of their beautiful new store now in, in downtown Peoria. So they've really grown. They've grown because of their service. They offer this great service. And it is hard to grow a running store in this day and age because there's so uh, much competition online. But they did it because they're positioning themselves um, as really the experts in running. They're really strategic with how they sponsor certain events, right? Really good with service. And if you offer a great service and a great product, people will keep coming back and they're going to turn into brand advocates, people that will continue to refer other people to you. And that's how I got in the door. So hopefully that paints a little picture of it's not just about the product. They're not just selling a shoe. They're selling themselves as a brand. They're selling their experience. So when I pull this image up, what are some things that come into mind? You might be thinking luxury, expensive, right? High quality. And all we're looking at here is a brand logo mark, the Mercedes logo. I have never owned a Mercedes. I don't think I'll ever own a Mercedes or can afford a Mercedes. But a Mercedes is a very high-end brand, right? It's not just this logo here. Immediately when I paused, all of us had certain thoughts and feelings that came to mind. And I'm sure a lot of those were the same. High-end, luxury, pricey, right? More we could have an older, maybe an older demographic. Why do all those thoughts come to all of our minds and we all have the same thought? Because of brand consistency. They're consistent with their message, their tone. They're consistent with their brand identity. So if I was to watch a, uh, a commercial and Mercedes came on, there's a high chance that they're going to show a car in either white, silver, black, or maybe a really cool bold red color. At the end, when that screen comes up with all the APR and, and whatnot they talk about, it's probably in a black background, white or light gray font, serif font, which we'll talk about, um, bold, clean, minimal, easy to read, and again, a high-end feel. I've never been in a Mercedes dealership, but if I was to if I was to try to picture what the inside of a Mercedes dealership looks like, I could probably write some things down, walk into one, and it would probably be accurate. The type of furniture that they have, the color palette that they have in their in their place of business, what their employees wear. I'm assuming they're probably a little more dressed up than a than a a non luxury dealership down the road, right? It's all brand experience, brand perception. Every touch point, every um, experience you have with him, whether that be electronically, in person, or you're watching something on TV or you see an ad, it's all consistent. And it's simple. It's, 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 and, and they've been doing it for so long. This is a big brand. They all, they have, Mercedes has a humongous budget, right, that they can afford for marketing and branding. But the concepts, can still be used by small businesses, by smaller organizations that don't have a huge budget, right? It's all about establishing the brand tone, messaging, and being consistent with everything that you do. Okay, so real quick, you know, before we dive into brand identity, let's just kind of go back here. Once you do develop your brand tone and messaging, it's really important to think about the copy that you put on your website. Again, this kind of folds back into messaging as well. If I go to the Mercedes website, their tone and their copy might be a little different than Ford. Like if they have a separate Ford website for just pickup trucks, it's rugged. We're here to help you get the job done, right? More confident, casual, um, where again, Mercedes is a little more buttoned up, professional, timeless, high end, high quality. It may be helpful, um, you know, if you do work with someone who specializes in copyright. Now, I, I do know that not everyone has the budget to do that, but a copywriter could certainly help take your brand 
persona, your brand messaging, your brand tone, and apply that into incredible, captivating language that you use on your about us section on social media, on your website. So you want to make sure, again, that that tone and message is consistent, but the, but the little pitches, little elevator pitches or phrases or certain things that you use is also consistent across the board. So before we get to brand identity, just remember, think about who you are as a business, why you started, what you stand for, what makes you different, who your competitors are. Uh, think about, again, who you're talking to. A lot of times I have clients that will say, well, I really want the brand identity for my business to look like this because it's my favorite color. Or it's it kind of reminds me of my favorite sports team. Cool, that's great. But strategically, it doesn't make sense, right? Because you're it doesn't speak to the end user. And a lot of times, people that own the business, maybe not a lot of times, but, but, but uh, a few times in the past, I found that the business owner is actually not even the target audience. They just happen to own the business and, and offer that product or service to a different demographic. And so what they may think is looks great because they personally like it. The audience that they're speaking to, it may not resonate with them. And so again, at the end of the day for messaging or all the components today, you could certainly do this yourself and I'll give you some resources, uh, but it may be helpful to work with a designer or, or um, advisor to help guide you through this process as well. In addition, um, again, since we're talking about SBDC, uh, SBDC does offer some local advisors, um, you know, at no cost to you. So if you are new or starting a business or need some advice, um, or just to kind of get out of your head and toss some ideas around of who you are as a business, certainly reach out to the SBDC. Okay, let's now segue over to what I think is the fun portion. We kind of went through the must have, the important elements of branding, but now we're going to go over to brand identity. And a lo everyone needs a logo. And so I am, um, the source I put down here is Logo Design Love with the author there. I, I don't have the book in front of me, uh, but this is a, a book I love if you're interested in logo design. But I wanna go over some key elements of what makes a good logo. And the first one being, you have to keep it simple. A simple logo helps meet most of the other requirements of iconic design. A lot of times people want, uh, to include so many different elements in the logo that at the end of the day, it almost looks like a hodgepodge of that exact same thing, ideas. A ton of ideas, throw it at the wall to see what sticks. Keep it simple. Keep to a simple color palette, a simple concept that's strong and clean and can be used on a variety of different mediums. Meaning, can you use that logo as an all white application? Your logo looks great in full color but you may need a solid color. Let's say if you're sponsoring a community event, they may ask you, hey, John, can you send us a all white PNG version of your logo? Shoot, I don't have that, right? So you wanna make sure your logo can work um, different color variations, different uh, orientations. So a horizontal version, great for smaller areas like a header of your website. But, but you might need a stacked version of your logo. Great for like business cards where you have a little more height to work with. Keep it relevant. We talked earlier about, you know, brand identity for a bank is going to look a little different than a brand identity for a childcare center. So you want to make sure that it's appropriate for the business that it identifies. So a childcare center, they're going to have more of the fun, bubbly kind of colors and fonts. Financial institutions, deeper colors, more professional tone, that higher end look. So again, you wanna make sure it keeps it relevant. Incorporate tradition. Every once in a while we do see some crazy design trends, um, but these trends are exactly that. They are trends, so they do come and go. Make sure your design direction doesn't look outdated within a year or two um, to where you would then need to make some adjustments uh, just after you spent all this time and maybe money into your rebrand or brand development. Aim for distinction, begin by focusing on design that is recognizable. Uh, we're working with a client right now that gave us a logo design that is a little challenging to understand. Now, when we hear the story of what went into it, it works, but again, not everyone's not gonna know that story. And so you wanna make sure it's distinct and, and even though it may be really abstract and you get it, 
Does your audience understand what it is? Commit to memory. Again, is it a bold color? Is it a logo mark? Is it a word mark? And then focus on one thing. Incorporate just one feature to help your design stand out. Now, I do want to say there are some differences in logo design. And of course, there's so many different directions that you can take. Our logo, which you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, is what's called a word mark. So we don't have a, a, a logo mark itself. This is just, these are just words. I don't have an icon. Um, and this is just a personal preference. Uh, you know, we really wanted our brand to kind of be almost uh, behind the scenes and just kind of let our work shine. And so we didn't want to go overboard with all these different crazy brand elements for ourselves. But at the same time, it certainly makes sense for some businesses, organizations to have a really cool mark that they could use within their social media profile image that they could use in other really cool applications, um, maybe around the office on print materials and more. So there's different directions that you can take. Again, thinking of all these things are going to help you either A, when you're designing a logo yourself, now, if you're designing a logo for yourself, um, you know, I understand not everyone's a graphic designer. There are some tools out there now that you, they're almost like little logo builders that you can kind of answer some questions, artificial intelligence is behind it, it will generate a cool logo for you. It's not bad, but it may not provide everything that you're looking for, but great for those on the call who don't have a ton of money to spend. On the flip side, you know, there are a variety of different designers, whether they be design interns going through a design program at your local uh, college or university. Um, you have independent people, freelancers, that really this is just what they do. There's a variety of online marketplaces that you can go to to get a logo design. Or again, you could work with um, just more of a brand advisor to help develop a variety of different things. So at the end of the day, you have options. You don't need to just think, oh gosh, I need to work with this big, you know, a big company to, to develop your brand. You don't, you can do it yourself uh, but it's not necessarily my first recommendation, but I understand if you don't have a ton of money to spend, start there. Something is better than nothing. And again, those generators have continued to improve year after year. So, of course, thinking of fonts, fonts have their own personality. So these are serif fonts, basic typeface with extra details in the letter. Again, Times New Roman, Georgia. So these have uh, these kind of... Uh, bring certain personalities to the surface, right? They're reliable, respectable, dependable, reputable, right? These fonts have been around for ages. And so you'll see, you know, more traditional companies, more high-end or buttoned up companies, they're using some serif fonts uh, within their brand. Sans serif fonts. Again, these are more clean. These are Helvetica, Century Gothic, clean, simple, contemporary, futuristic, straightforward. Now, again, you have your font that you use for your logo, uh, but you may then need certain font that you use for everything else. This is your headers and body for your website, your uh, copy for your stationery, for your business cards, just making sure everything is consistent. If you come up with a flyer, if you have a folder and business card, you package all that together, it has that same look. And so identifying what those font pairings are. Again, there's some really great online resources. If you just type in font pairings, um, they will give you some really cool font pairings. And for those on the call who are interested in DIY and they want to take on a challenge, um, of course, you can try to use fonts within the design program that you're working in. But Google Fonts is a really nice program that you can download a variety of free fonts that you can use for your, your branding project. So again, fonts have a personality. Colors uh, have personality as well. So we see a lot of products uh, like eco-friendly products. Of course, they're using green, natural, healthy, peaceful, um, brown, earthy, uh, simple, dependable. Next time you're in the grocery store, um, look after you, you, you're done shopping, maybe when you're in the checkout aisle, look down in your cart you're going to see a lot of red and a lot of orange. And it's because these are stimulating, vibrant, energetic colors. They want their product to stand out on the shelves. They want to get you excited to where maybe you go hungry, you're grabbing these products, you're going to see a lot of those colors in your cart. Uh, blue, trustworthy, secure, responsible. Now, blue is my favorite color, but we also wanted something that um, 
you know, had a sense of trust. We are working with people with their brands and marketing budgets. So that's one of the reasons why we picked that. You'll see a lot of financial institutions, social media, uh, back in the day, Twitter, now X, Facebook, they're using blue, trustworthy, secure, dependable. So again, colors have meanings, fonts have meanings. All right, we have about 20 minutes here. This is just a fun little exercise. These are, if, if you're on the call within the Champaign County-ish area, uh, you may recognize some of these, but these are really unique, what I would call logo marks within logo designs. And some of these you may immediately know what they are. How do you know what they are already? I haven't shown you the full thing. It's because they've used these consistently across all their different materials. The first one, iHotel. Second one, hopefully this one's easy, but State Farm Center, Champaign Outdoors, First Federal Bank, Busey, Logic, co-working facility in Champaign. So again, look at the colors. Champaign Outdoors, Mountains to Mount Main Street. That makes sense. Love the font that they selected for this. It has a, a slightly rough edge to it. And then of course, Mountains to Main Street is in this brushed, uh, brushed font. That makes sense. It's casual. It's approachable. It gives me this outdoor feeling. You have that dog tag as their logo mark. Really cool. First federal, bold, right? Contemporary, strong. These are, this is to symbolize, um, again, we didn't design these. These are just local examples that I really like, but uh, really to symbolize like wings of, of like an eagle, right? Busey. This is a great one. They really, it's, it's, Yes, there's a mark in the logo, but you're really just focusing on the name. So it's big and bold. It's easy to read. They're using the columns to kind of help support the B. It has that sense of strength, very similar to the other bank. So again, quick example of how colors mean certain things, how fonts mean certain things. Um, and this is everything that goes into a brand. But to identify the fonts, identify the colors, we have to understand those two other components that we discussed earlier. Another example, uh, agency is listed there at the bottom left. But this is, if you've been to the new Harvest Market, I guess not new anymore, but newer Harvest Market in Champaign, there's a really cool restaurant inside called the Farmhouse Restaurant. Now, Harvest Market's a kind of newer concept grocery store, um, you know, integrating some really cool things in there that you don't commonly see in other grocery stores. But they have this restaurant. Now, of course, when you say farmhouse, you may be thinking of older country, but how do we make farmhouse um, feel new and feel fresh. They picked a really cool, bold color palette, this beautiful yellow color, pairing it with this gray, gray and yellow is certainly a contemporary color pairing. And then had these accents of this almost aqua color for these icons of a tractor, windmills, gardening tools, etc. But it doesn't stop there just on the top left. You'll see how they started to apply it to packaging how they started to apply it to a physical space. So when you go into the space, you, you start gathering this, you, you start getting this feeling, if you will, of, wow, this is kind of cool. This is, this feels new, feels fresh. It's, but yet I know the food's gonna be good. You know, that, that, those kind of feelings here. Um, so again, great little example of how they're, they're taking the brand not only from a digital component, top left, but they're applying it to a physical space. So the brand experience is through everything that you see, every visual point, every touch point, it's, it's all very consistent. Uh, tagline. So we don't, you don't necessarily have to have a tagline with your brand, but a lot of organizations um, like, for example, working with a library, uh, not a local library, but another library to develop a new tagline for their library. And this really helps explain the unique value that your business or organization offers. It doesn't need to be long and it shouldn't be long. These are just some quick examples that I pulled. Busey, I don't know if Busey still uses this one, but your dream, our promise. And I've heard that one over and over again because they say it at the end of commercials. They say it when you're on hold with them, right? And so it's, it's that consistency. Christy Clinic, we listen, we care. The ultimate driving machine. Again, these other ones you've probably heard of or seen before. So again, this is this is this really kind of comes during that brand positioning. Sometimes when you are working on mission statements with an advisor or with your team, 
we do want to think about, well, is there a tagline <clears throat> that we can use in our marketing purposes? And you can see here, these are not, uh, these are not long at all. But when I say your dream, our promise, there's a feeling there, right? There's, there's this, we want to help you. We're confident that regardless of your dream, we promise you that we're going to help get you there. And we said that in four words, like how cool is that? So a tagline, again, don't be overly clever, make it memorable if you do opt to have a tagline within your, um, uh, within your, your brand identity. Again, going back to brand personality, uh, again, that brand voice when you are thinking of taglines or just messaging, just kind of recapping here, professional, friendly, service-oriented, technical, informative, right? How do you want to communicate uh, with your customers? A little screenshot of the example I gave earlier. Uh, excuse me, the Jimmy John's. I'm going to take a quick drink here. Uh, these screenshots were from uh, a couple of years ago, so I'm sure they, they may have changed their website by now, but they're leaning into that word freak, freaky fast, right? We're freaks, freak, yeah, we're freaks, bread freak, meat freak, lettuce freak, et cetera. So they're having fun with it. They're leaning into this phrase that they commonly use um, and how we're not only freaky fast, but we're, we're freaks about fresh bread, fresh meat, great lettuce, they're kicking ranch, okay? So this kind of goes back to that other component of, yes, they're just a sandwich shop, but what do they stand for? Great customer service, quick delivery of the product, whether in-store or, or delivery, and then great quality ingredients. And this is their website is leaning into that component for that quality ingredients and then applying their brand personality behind it. They even take it a step further on the right-hand side look how they're responding to people on social media. So they're almost responding like Jimmy John himself. Um, it's casual, it's fun. They're responding with some gifts every once in a while. Uh, when someone said, hey, it took me 20 minutes to get my sandwich, I'm six minutes down the road. They say, I'm truly sorry for the delay today. Slow is not how I roll or how I built my biz. I hope, we, I hope you can forgive me and give me another shot. Still friends. Like what a fun little response, right? How can you not be mad at that? It, that doesn't work for everyone though. You wanna think about the brand tone, does that fit with your business? So, but this works for them. Okay, as we move on, uh, this is another company. Again, I'm not sponsored by Jimmy John's. I would love to get some free sandwiches. I'm not sponsored by this company here. These are just personal examples that I love. Uh, Sticker Mule, this is a company we literally just ordered from uh, this morning uh, that I do recommend. Uh, they, they offer really cool custom stickers, magnets, die cut things, label, packaging, really cool stuff. They're fast, they're low cost, and uh, I just love their brand. So they're, the brand is Sticker Mule, and so custom stickers that kick ass. I, I gave a presentation to some students at Parkland College, and they're like, oh my gosh, can we say kick ass online? And I was like, well, it, it's, it aligns with the whole mule concept. They're like, oh, okay, we get it now. So again, yes, they can get away with it. It's 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 a little edgy, but um, it's it's fun, right? Because it ties back into the mule, and you can kind of see some of their examples. They're using the mule, which is a mark, a logo mark, that little mule within the name. And again, we aim to build an incredible experience for ordering custom products. Wasting time sucks. That's why we relentlessly focus on making it fast and easy to order custom products. Order in seconds and get your products in days. Free proofs, free artwork help, free shipping, and fast turnaround are why people love us. What a great opening statement. It's confident. They, they are setting themselves and say, they are positioning themselves to, to really explain how we can help you. We understand wasting time sucks. We hate it as well. We want to deliver custom products to you the way it should be done. Fast, easy, free shipping, quick turnaround. That's why people love us. And that's their opening statement. Um, and I love that. And so again, think back to everything we talked about, the brand tone. It's not just what you see here with the, the orange and the, the brown and how the website looks, but it's also about personality and tone, what you see on the right-hand side. Of course, when you are thinking of a brand, brand project, whether you're 
uh, a new business, developing your brand for the first time, or you're rebranding. And actually, we're rebranding ourselves. And so this is something I'm currently working on right now. But you really want to think about all the different touch points, all the different visuals or items, collateral, uh, that your customer sees that we need to redo. One of the items I know is on my list is what you see right in front of you. Developing a new PowerPoint presentation template for the new brand. But you also want to think about your office and business design, signage around the office, the front door signage, uh, any other dimensional signage, stationary, advertisements, packaging, your website, copy, social media accounts. There's so much that goes into it. That's why when people are thinking of a brand project, um, dollar signs start coming to mind because it is it can get pricey if you have a lot of different touch points, a lot of different print material or a physical space that you need to update um, that then better aligns with this new brand. So really go through your list of what you need to integrate your brand on. A couple of little personal examples here. Several years ago, American Airlines uh, rebranded. That's just a fun, bold look to it. So if you happen to travel this year, keep an eye out for uh, this really cool, bold look. Um, this is their logo before, which I'm sure everyone recognizes, and their logo after. I think they rebranded sometime 2013, 2014. But again, big company, take the same concepts though. They're thinking of all the different touch points, all the different things that you see that brand on, down to even in the waiting area. You have certain monument signs that they're using the same fonts. They're using certain colors. Um, even when down there you see the base colors and you have the wood colors and the, and the, um, and the blue and certain things. Even when we were designing like our office, we wanted it to, cre we wanted to create a consistent tight feel up here. And so we found Ottomans that were in the, our exact same blue color that we put throughout the office. Certain furniture that we had, we wanted it all within the same wood color. Um, and even down the chairs that we ordered, it had a certain vibe to them that worked well within our space. We're curating experience, we're curating a space, not only for our team, but for our customers that, and clients that come up and visit us as well. Same thing should, uh, you should think about for your physical space too. How can you apply your brand to maybe a simple wall color, right? In, in one of our areas, we have a really cool mural on the wall and we have this light that comes up. Well, the color that light that comes up on that wall is blue because that's part of our brain, brain color. So little things around the office, even though it is an office that you and your employees work in, a lot of times people think of their brand just kind of for your website, for your business card and other things. But if it's a space that your employees are working on, you're looking to recruit people, if customers and clients come in, how can you integrate that brand into your physical space? Of course, we talked about making your brand consistent with a brand guide. Don't constantly change your brand. That's why it's important to try to get it right the first time and document everything for future um, design work if someone else is helping you. Walmart was actually the first brand guide that I ever looked at, that I remember looking at. We all are familiar with Walmart. We know who Walmart is. Certain things come to mind when you think of Walmart. So again, big example, but you can take all those big... Uh, you know, companies take those concepts and apply those to, to your business as well, but it doesn't need to be a 20-page a document. We've done brand guides that are one page, simply just list the fonts, the colors, but I like looking at what a big one could be to gather ideas. So certainly maybe do a little research and type in maybe your favorite company or brand and look up their brand guide to see if they have a public brand guide, which a lot of them do uh, online. Um, okay, we have about five minutes here. This was just a quick example. I, I won't go through it all, but Tom Shoes back in the day, um, you know, you buy a pair and they gave a pair away. That was the whole concept. And I remember back when Tom's was uh, uh, popular, uh, I remember thinking like the design of those shoes were just okay to me, right? But I found that a lot of people were buying it because they weren't buying a pair of shoes. They weren't just buying a pair of shoes, very similar to Running Central. They were buying an experience. They were part of something. They were part of the social good because by buying that, a portion of my what I gave to them is going to be given to those in need. That's this feel-good component. So people weren't just buying shoes anymore. They were part of this community, this Tom's brand advocate community that were giving back to those in need. I think they're still around. But again, that was one of my earlier examples that I had of a brand that 
just offered a very simple looking pair of shoes, um, but took it a step further. And, and they created this kind of community of, of do-gooders because they were they were giving back to those in need. So a really cool concept there. So brings us to the end of today's presentation. We have a few minutes left for questions. So if you haven't already, feel free to uh, ask those in the chat box. But I hope you you took something away from today's presentation, right? That a brand is more than just your logo, but your logo is still and your brand identity is still very, very important. You really need to make sure to, to develop who you are, what you stand for, who you're talking to, who your competitors are, what makes you different, how are you positioning yourself in the market, and then that helps lead uh, your brand identity creative designs. So thank you very much for jumping on. I'm going to hand it over to Jordan to see if we have any questions, and we'll go from there. Thanks so much, Scott. Um, we don't have any questions submitted right now, but I have one that maybe we'll get the ball rolling for some people here and just something to think about. Um, say you want to do a rebrand and you yeah. kind of already have everything set up and, you know, everyone is aware of your logo and stuff like that. Where do you suggest starting with that? I mean, is it uh, interest groups that you may get input from? Is it someone like yourself who does this for a living? You know, what's what's the thought process on that? Yeah. So the first thing would be, you know, what's the reason for the rebrand? What's, what's that window of opportunity? You know, for us we have found that we we offer a variety of different services, but over here is what we love doing. So we wanted to reposition ourselves a bit more to really focus on these core components. Uh, you know, we'll always offer advisor services and webinar and things, but over here is really what we want to focus on. And then we have an idea of the type of clients that we would love to work with, right? Uh, and so we, for us, we needed to reposition ourselves and elevate our look a bit more. Um, to to align with that, and so uh, it really, it's it's all about understanding your why. What what's the reason for that rebrand? But you're exactly right, Jordan. It's it is important to gather feedback, and so if time and and funds allow, um, it is important to maybe talk to some customers if possible, talk to some employees, and conduct some focus groups, get some information, some data. Of course, so you can work with some consultants that can help guide you through that process, facilitate uh, those focus groups. Because not, you know, not all the time people want to be 100% transparent in focus groups. If they are talking with the owner of the business, they'll say, it's great, but you want some of the hard truths. And that's where maybe someone else facilitating could help. But yeah, identifying what's the reason. Is it a slump in sales? Do we Are we just not standing out in the marketplace? People, we've been around for a number of years. They still haven't heard us. How do we get out there more? Um, understanding your why and then developing a game plan of, well, what do we need to do to reposition ourselves? And then really developing a timeline, not only for the rebrand project, but a timeline for your rollout. You want to be very strategic with how you roll this out because you really have one shot. And I think one thing to, to look at too, um, Experience Champaign-Urbana just went through a big rebrand too. So everyone on the call, if you, if you look up that, they have a beautiful new brand identity website, and all that was rolled out very strategically. Um, and so they they went through a, a pretty big rebrand. I think it was last year, two, a couple of years ago, Jordan. So, um, so yeah, hopefully that answers at least that starting question here. So, Awesome, thanks. Um, we don't have any questions submitted still, um, but I do want to reiterate, I know that's a ton of information. Like Scott says, all of these topics we do, he could speak on for a week instead of oh, an hour. Yeah, I, I love it. Can you tell I love marketing? Yeah, marketing creative. <laughs> um, but we will make sure that you get the follow-up email with that recording. So if there's something you want to go back and revisit or share with your team, anything like that, you will have the option to do. Um, I did drop the link in the chat where you can download a PDF version of the PowerPoint, but I'll include that in that follow-up email as well. Um, and some very exciting news that I want to announce real quick before we wrap up. Um, our website is back up and live for everyone. So CUSBDC.org has been um, a placeholder for quite a few months now, but it does have all of our information, including all of our upcoming workshops and webinars with Scott. So please feel free to check those out on our website or the Clan and Marketing site. Um, all the registration links will send you to the same place. So you are getting registered accurately. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to respond to that email. I can always connect you with Scott if something comes up or anything like that. So I do want to thank everyone for joining us today. And thank you so much, Scott, for presenting. Yeah, thank you. Have a good rest of your day. I hope uh, to see everyone on one of our next uh, webinars or in April. We do have an in-person uh, workshop at the Champaign Public Library. So definitely check out our website for that. So have a good rest of your day. I hope to see you in the future. Bye-bye.
Thanks, everybody. Bye.